how do you feel? He drops off. Fine. I slept like a log. Oh, no, like a rock. The first movement of the Third Symphony kept running through my head. <laughs> what the rocks tell me. That's because uh, they were conducting it tomorrow. I was the music. Therefore, I was the rock, and the rock was me. Close the window. It's cold. You look feverish. Let me take your temperature. It has nothing to do with my temperature. It's chilly. Now close the window. And don't fuss. You were part of the dream, too. Hmm. A pebble, I suppose. No. You were a living creature, struggling to be born. At last, you've noticed. You were a chrysalis. Ready to turn into a pretty painted butterfly. Where are you going? Oh, just flitting out for a fashion magazine. I have the honor of addressing Dr. Gustav Mahler, Siegfried Krennic, journalist, Toblach News. Dr. Mahler, is it true that you canceled your conducting commitments in New York because the competition from Toscanini was too strong, or because the people didn't appreciate your own music, or was it simply ill health? I was tired of skyscrapers and sarsaparilla. I want to find a place near Vienna where the sun shines and the grape grows and I can breathe again. Congestion of the land. So it was ill health. Why is everyone so literal these days? I was speaking metaphorically. Why were you forced to leave the Vienna Opera in the first place? Was it anti-Semitism? Or because you worked your singers and musicians like a slave driver? Certainly drove one musician too hard. Dr. Marlowe, which do you prefer? Conducting or composing? I conduct to live. I live to compose. Now, you have wasted precisely two minutes of my time, Mr. Krennic. Why don't you do what I do when I'm teaching the New York Philharmonic to play in time? Beat it. <laughs> yes, very good. Thank you, Dr. Marlowe. It was certainly kind of you to talk to me. Greatly honored, I'm sure. All Austria is proud to welcome you home again. Don't say it. I know.
guess it'll be your shadow. On the notice anyone takes of me. I was waiting for that. It's about time you changed your tune. I have plenty of tunes. Until you killed them all. Right over the wheel. And next to the lavatory. You've managed to reserve the noisiest compartment on the train. But now you can exert your own personality up to the hilt. Charm the attendant. Seduce him into getting us a nap. It was the last one. We were very lucky. I've to got a migraine coming in. Privacy, punctuality, and silence. And the greatest of these is silence. But Gustav, it's as silent as the grave. No, dearest. It's as noisy as a nursery. Listen. But Butch is asleep. It can't be the children. Listen. pieces called what the animals in the forest tell me or what the flowers in the meadows tell me. Even your titles give you away. All your music is a hymn to nature. Not quite all. You've forgotten the most important title. What love tells me. Now give me a hand. Anyway, I don't want to imitate nature. I want to capture its very essence. So that all the birds and the beasts died tomorrow and the world became a desert. When people heard my music, they would still know, feel, what nature was. Now, if you really want to help me in my work, run along and see if you can't stop that racket. When are you going to look at my songs, Gustav? You promised to. Ever since we got married. I know, but I want to study them properly, and that takes time. When I can give up conducting altogether and compose all the time instead of just during the holidays, it'll be different. The crows are the worst offenders. And if you can dispose of any unhatched generations while you're at it, you'll save yourself a lot of future work. Close the door quietly as you go.
attendant seeing what he can do. There's no other compartment free, but he's hoping someone will exchange. Hmm, just coming into another station. Won't be long. Why don't you lie down? <laughs> Christ! <coughs> Why do they always honor me with the sound I detest most? The brass bloody band. You shouldn't have written so many into your symphonies. Oh, there's a reception committee, too. And be bound to want speech. You make it. Where are you going? To the lavatory. You can't. What shall I tell them? Tell them their music gives me the shits. Gustl? Something to tell me, my son? Ten. Ten? Ah, good, good. Minus. What? Minus. Oh. The day you were five, I've given you every scrap of my knowledge. Pick up those bottles. Try again next year. For nine whole months, I paid your tutor to give you extra coaching, to guarantee you'd pass the entrance examination. I've bought you expensive books. Schmidt's German grammar, Hindemith's syntax, collected works of... What's his name? Goethe. And this is how you repay me, by not winning the scholarship. I mean, 50 whole crowns down the drain. It wasn't enough. Do you know... What? It wasn't enough. Not enough? Do my ears deceive me? The sacrifices your mother and me have made for you. And such ingratitude. You know, I've a good mind to get hold of... Corridor, father! Briar's the one, five the crown. They changed my mark from ten to ten minus. They didn't want a due to win for second year running anyway. So he goes to the Polytechnic? Yes. The son of the goyish your mum's a... Disgrace he's brought on me and my house. I'll kill him. For my own bare hands, I'm killing Eat your soup before it takes cold and die, Gustav. It's in a very weak condition. So, what use is a diploma from the Iglau Polytechnic when the concert platforms of the world are crying out for great pianists? Uh, who do you have? You just told You us. have Ignaz Moschels, you have Franz Liszt, you have Rubinstein. A few lessons from my old friend Maestro Slatky. A scholarship to the proud conservatoire and the whole world at your feet. 
The whole world at your feet. You'd like that, wouldn't you, good still precious? Yes, Aunt Rosa. Alfred Grudmill himself was an infant prodigy at the Sletky Academy. It sounds like a factory of prodigies. <laughs> a factory of Jewish dwarfs with lace collars and shiny patent leather shoes. What's the good of having a piano if nobody ever uses it? I do use it. I make up tunes. Gustav's going to be a child prodigy. Isn't it wonderful? Granddad's arranging lessons for him with Sladky. Not for three crowns a lesson, is not. One crown. Crowns, crowns, crowns! Crowns for books, crowns for food, crowns for relatives, and our crowns for music. Schleck. Sledge always charged three crowns a lesson. Uh, for me, an old friend, he'll charge one. He owes me a favor. Well, yeah, Granddad says young Grunfeld has just bought his parents two houses in Prague. And Sigismund H Helberg has been presented to the King of England. Ah, our own boy playing at Buckingham Palace. Imagine. But only one crown. Oh. One crown. Get the schnapps, brother. I'll drink to my son's future fame and fortune, eh? What do you call that, may I ask? It's called the kitten serenade. <laughs> More like the tune the cat died of. <laughs> Eine kleine Katmusik. <laughs> where did that come from? Out of my own head. And that's where it should have stayed. Even a monkey is more clever. He can pick out a tune on one finger, pick out his nose with another, and eat a banana all at the same time. But to play the piano calls for genius. And genius calls for scales, 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 even more scales. Scale of C major, begin. Elbows in, wrists down, elbows, wrists, 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 elbows, wrists. Eight. Eight crowns. Cash. Payment for another month's tuition. Father. Don't worry about the money. It's a good investment. Couldn't the money go towards lessons in composition instead? <laughs> Who ever heard of a composer making money? Mozart, they buried in a pauper's grave. Father, I don't think I will be good enough for a concert pianist. Practice, my boy. Practice. Become a king of the keyboard. Now go on, run along. Make your mother and me proud of you. Goodbye, Father. Thank you. First one, out to the boat and back, gets a prize.
People call me Old Nick. What's your name? Marla. Gustav. Gustav. How long have you been swimming, Gustav? Two years. But I can't. The water won't keep me up. Oh, it won't keep up a bar of iron either. Iron ships float on it, like basking porpoises. Why shouldn't they keep you up? Relax. Follow in it. Forget about swimming. That'll come by itself. Where are we going? We're going to float. I don't want to. Take me back. Now then, look at the clouds. Look how easily they float. There. Isn't it easy? It's easy when you're holding me. Oh, I'm not holding you. Look, no hands. Oh, no! <laughs> I don't think of sinking. Think. Think of floating. There. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for this? My music. Hmm. Good title. What nature tells me. It's unusual, even if it is a bit ambitious. Did you like it? Oh, you've got a glimmering of the divine spark, I suppose. We all have somewhere deep down inside of us, glowing away in the dark. But we all need something, something special to ignite it, make it burst into flame. Uh, it's this something special you lack. Now, what is it you're lacking in? Years there, nothing. Rossini was writing symphonies at seven. Technique? Ah, you can pick that up from a textbook as easy as ABC. No, 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 no. A real feeling for nature, that's what you lack. Nature tells me. What berries are those? I don't know. What tree's that? I don't know. Quick! What sort of bird's that? It went too fast. What kind of bird's that thing? Swallow? This time of year, they come and go. Do you know where they go to? When does the moon rise? What brings the north wind? Where is the great bear? I don't know. And you've got the cheek to write music. A man who doesn't live in nature, like an animal or a rock, will never in his whole life write two notes worth of light. <laughs> Good God. What have your parents been thinking of all these years? I think I can recognize lilac, at least when it's in bloom. Every day, I'm somewhere else. Ah, now there's a pianist, Franz Liszt. Even if the boy's only half as good a piano player as Franz Liszt to be doing all right, eh? <laughs> Good morning. On my way over to Littman's, who should I bump into but old man Mendelssohn? Oh, Felix's nephew. Do you know how much that boy used to get for just one performance? Mm -hmm. 800 crowns. 800 crowns! Oh, a performance! Just work out what that comes to at 15 concerts a month, huh? Of course. You might do more. And no outlay, no expenditure. 
Look. Just a few sheets of music and a tuning fork. All other expenses paid for by the concert promoters. But it's a gift. And some of those concertos don't last half an hour. <laughs> Work out what that comes to a minute. My God, that's 3,800. No, the boy will need a manager. The two to protect it, no, it's crooked concert promoters. And where would you find such a thing as an honest that's manager outside eight, the family? Eight, eh? that's no, 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 no. A relative, someone no, who has the boy's two. personal interests at What does the number of first says? Huh? Oh, perhaps Gustav will play something for us after dinner.
Take it. Read it. Go on, read what it says! Dearest Alma, I love you, Max. How's the music business? Still reorchestrating Beethoven. I hope someone does the same for me if ever I go deaf. <laughs> From what I hear, that's the least of your troubles. It's funny, I can never remember how many symphonies he wrote. Beethoven. Nine, wasn't it? Don't they say no great writer of symphonies ever gets past nine? How's your number ten coming on? If you're trying to scare me to death, you'll have to try harder. I'm not superstitious. I thought all Jews were superstitious. Oh, I beg your pardon. I forgot. You're not a Jew now, are you? Not now you're successful. <laughs> I can't remember. What religion are you? I'm... a composer. If you're waiting to talk to my wife, wait outside. No, Gustav, it's you I want to talk to. You know how I feel about her. I need her. I love her. I can't live without her. How original. I must send you to music. I had no idea you were a poet as well. Now you're being facetious. I'm paying you the compliment of being perfectly frank with you. You know it's been over between you two for ages. And you know why. You'd be better off with a paid nurse. And she'd be better off with me. You know it. People think you're a great man, that your music speaks of humanity, warmth and understanding. Well, prove it. Let her go. I'm sick of being told of the way my music speaks to people. My music begins where words leave off, and I don't need to write a symphony to say, get out! I shall be getting off at St. Bolton. I hope you'll come with me. compartments with us. I've explained who you are and that you're sick. I'm not moving. What do you mean? You're not moving. I've gone to a lot of trouble. Put them back, Porter. There's been a misunderstanding. Certainly, Dr. Marla. No trouble at all. Thank you. And you're searching for tranquility, Dr. Marla. Good heavens. Yes. I fully appreciate the sensitivity of a mind so rare as yours. So delicately tuned into the vibrations of the infinite. Not to mention the harmony of the universe. I'm afraid my husband has changed his mind. He wants to. Alma, please. 
please. It's a great privilege to meet someone who knows what it's all about. The music of the spheres, you mean? No. I mean death. I'm afraid you've got the wrong man, madam. No, I read it in the newspaper. Your latest symphony, the ninth. It's all about death. Death the pitiless enemy. Death the joker. Even death the lover. Some people say he's God. Lunch. What's God? He made everything. He looks just like a man. Is everyone God? Everyone is part of God. That tree? Yes. And the water? Yes. Is everyone God then, even Lulu? Even Lulu. But how can God be all different? Look! Look at your fingernails. Feel your hair. They're different, aren't they? Yes. It's all you. Our standard, Mr. Freeman, please. Come along. And when we die, does a bit of God die too? No. There's a part of us that never dies. A part that nobody can see. How do you know it's dead then? Do you see anything in there? No. You? No. Now can you see something? Good. Come over, Terry. Mm -hmm. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean to say it isn't there. Like a rainbow? Something about all of us. Something that nobody can see. Not even in that? No. What is it then? Some people call it the spirit. Some call it the soul. And that part never dies. Never? Never. What happens to it? It becomes part of God's spirit. Good night. What happened with angels, love? Angels are what old-fashioned people thought good spirits should look like. Do they? Certainly not. And who are these dirty angels? They're bad spirits. They're supposed to live in a fiery place called hell. <laughs> fairy story. But if we're good, will he give us wait for more dead? Look, whether your spirit's been good or bad, it makes no difference. There are no presents or punishments. 
Heaven and hell were made up by man. Not God. So there's nothing then? Oh, yes. There is something, all right. Something he shares with us all. What? Love. So we should all have to die. All go to see God. All going to die, 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 die. Yes, even death the joker, death the lover. I read about it in the New York Times. Don't believe all you read in the papers, madam. They exaggerate. For death, you should read farewell. The symphony is a farewell to love. I thank you for your kind consideration. with Max. See if I can.
dreamt. I imagined. Shh. Don't speak. They've telegraphed and a doctor's going to meet us at the next station. It was my funeral. I was alive. You were there with Max. I wanted to live so very much, but you didn't take any notice. It was terrible. Don't worry. It's all right. I understand. Charming, my dear. Even if it was a little derivative of Zemlinsky. My teacher. It's always a little Young. derivative of a rent. Who is very derivative of Rachmaninoff. Who is very derivative of Paderewski. Who is very derivative of Tchaikovsky. Oh, for music lovers everywhere. The least said about him, the better. <laughs> oh, stop it, Gustav. Your song was charming, Alma. Even if it was a little naive, a little childlike. Critics are always accusing me of being naive. Don't associate naivety with children, though. They don't even know what it means. Heaven lies all around us in our infancy. To enter that world, you must see with the eyes of children and hear with the ears of children. Which you capture perfectly in your fourth symphony, Gustav, a child's view of heaven, divine. Now, if Alma hasn't any more songs for me to sing, don't you think we should get on with Tristan, Gustav? Yes, down to business. Amateur music's all very well, but it doesn't pay the rent. You liked it, then? Yes. I was surprised. You're very talented. But if you'll take my advice, you'll leave music making to us professionals. As a budding composer, you're better off as you are. A housewife. I didn't. I know which I'd rather be. I didn't mean that. I just don't want to see you get hurt. I've seen it too often. The Emperor will see you now. You'll address him as Your Majesty. His Excellency, Franz Joseph, Emperor of Austria, Justine and Gustav Mahler. We are greatly honored that Your Majesty has deigned to grant us an audience. Don't debase yourself, my good fellow. I can't bear sycophants. Dispense with the pleasant vision. Let's get down to cases. You've applied for the directorship of the Imperial Court of the Theatre of Vienna. Hmm? Of course, you realize that is the greatest musical accolade to which any musician can aspire. Uh, 
You are aware of the fact that a very distinguished colleague of yours, uh, Hugo Wolf, has also applied for the post. Yes, Your Majesty, I was aware of the fact. Parents? Deceased, Your Majesty. Oh. Uh, what are your qualifications? In 1875, I enrolled at the Conservatoire in Vienna. A year later, at the age of 16, I won the piano competition. Two years after that, I won the composer's competition with a piano quintet. Uh, your achievements in that field do not concern us. Uh, we're in need of a, a director of opera, not a composer monk, eh, who would uh, utilize the position to ensure performances of his own second-rate symphonies. As I understand, you did in Prague. <laughs> you have a brother who also fancies himself as a composer, correct? That is true, Your Majesty. His name is Otto. Some say he writes better music than you. Is that true? He's a very gifted young man, Your Majesty. He applied for an audience once. I was too busy to see him. Pity. I must get him to write a march for me. Everyone else has. Uh, go on with your qualifications. Artistic director, conductor of the Royal Hungarian Opera, artistic director and conductor of the Hamburg Opera. That's all very well, but... What about your social qualifications? Can you waltz? Yes, Your Majesty. And your charming wife. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. And then waltz! Dances, Your Majesty. Oh, no, you fool. Musical qualifications. Well, now, let me see. Last year, I was selected from many applicants to conduct a season of German music at the Royal Opera House in London, where I performed with some success the works of Richard Wagner. Wagner? Now, says the rub. Drop your trousers. I beg your pardon, Majesty. Drop your trousers. I'm sure your wife won't object. I assume she's seen it before. It's as I thought. A Jew. But there's the rub. We've some brilliant surgeons here. They could probably graft on a new foreskin, but, but I doubt if it would deceive Cosima Wagner. She can uh, smell a Jew a mile off, and she's an even greater anti-Semite than her late lamented husband. Unless we can win her over, my hands are... Well, they're tied. See, I may rule the country, but she rules the world of music. That's a pity. You dance divinely. I'm afraid we must now terminate the audience. It's time for me to take my therapeutic water. Hugo! Hugo! I suggest you take your sister away, Dr. Marla. Her walk is likely to become violent and abusive. Hugo, could he mention me? 
Only to say he still thinks you're a better composer than your brother. He wants you to write a march for him. Otto Mahler, simple tunes for simple minds. Why doesn't he want to see me then? Why does he still think he's the Emperor of Austria instead of a musician? I don't know. Well, you still thought it right to humor him. Somehow he's found out I've applied for the post that he failed to get. You should have heard the questions he asked me. Oh, he really put me through it. Perhaps it was revenge on you for stealing his job. I haven't landed the wretched thing yet. Look, take this home, will you? I want to work with Dr. Victor. I was going to a Tchaikovsky concert. Otto's going to take you home. Later on, we'll go out for a meal. My treat. You treated us last night. You can't keep on. Tonight, we'll eat at home. I'll help you with the shopping. Oh, stop cuddling me, both of you. She should get married. One less mouth for you to feed. Along here. In many ways, you and Hugo suffer from the same misfortune. Both victims of a common recurring pattern. Brilliant composers ahead of your time, forced to earn a living conducting the music of other great men who were also neglected in their day. For some, the strain is too great. Tchaikovsky, Schumann, for instance. And they crack up, like our poor friend Hugo. Does he still write? Every day. Reams of music. All rubbish. His early songs were among the most perfect ever written. I understand you studied together at the Conservatoire. Yes. He was more brilliant than his teachers even then. If I were to get that position at the opera, the one he was after, do you think it would upset him? Would that stop you accepting it? The students, we shared digs. We all loved him. Me, my sister, the whole family. We all have our responsibilities. Yours is to your family. Mine is to Hugo. Gustav. Hugo. We're just in time for one of my latest songs. The critics say that's all they're fit for. <laughs> it's all right, Hugo. Our time will come. I don't want to see you get hurt. Leave composing to those too stupid to do anything else. I'll put the children to bed. Oh. Right, Anna. Try the leaps that you were having yesterday. I'll try. Left.
consumed by flames. You and Max were mocking me. It's terrible to destroy something that's alive and nobody notices. It's terrible. It changes you. I understand. Do you? I wonder. Perhaps you do. Before we get to Vienna, you must choose between Max and me. Gustav, please. But your choice must be made out of love, not duty. Duty destroys. Duty always destroys. Stuffed cabbage and cashew. I hope you're all hungry. About five minutes, right? Lovely, I'm ravenous. What is that, Otto? It's something new. It's not finished yet. It's called Sunset. And interesting. Interesting is easy. Beautiful is difficult. Write beautiful music in time. And she'll type beautiful letters. Business college. <laughs> it is a waste of money. At least I'll be able to earn some money when I get my diploma. When you finally do finish studying at your precious conservatoire, what guarantee have you got that anyone's going to pay to hear your music? Look at Gustav. If he can't do it, what chance have you got? Why should he be the only breadwinner? Bread, bread, bread. Morning, noon and night. Hey, Otto. No wonder Jews have got a bad name. How's school? Rotten. When are we going to America? The minute our dear brother gives us the fair impression. You're incorrigible. I'm only asking for a loan. America is the land of golden opportunity. And once my name is in lights, I shall pay back every penny. Liar. And drag down the family name into the bargain. We may never be rich, but at least Gustav and I are members of an honorable profession. Then I'd rather be a member of the oldest profession. Thank you. <laughs> They can't stand this any longer. Shut up, there are a lot of you. It'll be all right. If I get the job at the court opera, our troubles are over. Poor Hugo thought that, and look where he landed up. Hugo told me. He gave me the answer. Perhaps my religion is against me. Apart from that, I'm more qualified than anyone else in the country. The only thing between me and that job is Cousin of Wagner. So what are you going to do? Marry her? Nothing so drastic. I've just become a Catholic. I... <laughs>
Got it. What, Gustav? One passport to heaven. The keys to the kingdom of the Vienna State Opera. What was it like? It's no worse than having a tooth filled. The incense acts as an anesthetic. Gustav, what would Mother have thought? A 
at last the boy is inside the Buckingham Palace already. No, I mean changing your religion just for the sake of the family. Oh, devil take the family. I did it for me. Well, I hope you don't live to regret it. What, do you expect me to be struck dead by the wrath of God or something? Don't worry about him. He's dead. Man is his own God. Well, that's that. Be baptized in the Church of Christ. Now it's time for me to be received into the House of Mammon. You can baptize me in champagne at the Café Royal. Uh, but I'm not dressed properly. And what about the others? Let's take a bottle home. They'll be so happy, especially Otto. Amen to that. We'll get a magnum. Two magnums. Oh, magnum mysterium! Ha <laughs> ha! mouth for you to feed. Your second-rate brother, Otto. No. Never do anything out of duty. It's a treadmill. I sacrificed my work to it for years. It always ends in disaster. Do things out of love, not duty. If you love Max more than me, you must go with him. stared at. But the children, they want to give you their bouquets. Wreaths. Not bouquets, wreaths. Close the blinds. Oh, Doctor, yes. thank you for coming. It's my husband. Thank you. I was putting a case on the rack, Doctor. When did you suffer your first attack? Doctor! Doctor! What are you thinking of? I'm trying to think about the development section of the first movement of the Sixth Symphony. But what? Is the house on fire? What do you mean? Because it must be bloody important for you to interrupt me when I'm working! Well, what is the meaning of this? Songs on the death of children! Songs on the life of children. There are many forms of death. Those songs are they're on the death of innocence. I don't choose what I compose. It chooses me. Now you take care of the children and I'll take care of the music. You're inhuman. You'd rather sacrifice the lot of us than lose one note of your wretched music. still there.
is your danger before them. My mind is in torment for them. In stormy weather, in winds that howl, I shelter the children in safety at home. I fear they may die in the morning. When your sweet mother comes through the door and I turn my head to look at her, not on her face my first glance falls, but on the place closer to her side where your dear face would be, smiling your good night to me as you used to, little one. When your sweet mother comes through the door, in the candle's glow, I remember how you always came to me, running before her to say good night. Now, in the 
growing darkness, we are left alone. O oh, light of joy, forever gone. I had my first heart attack shortly after the death of one of my children. Yes, I read about that. Uh, not the heart, the, uh, the coincidence, I mean. The child's death and those, uh, those morbid sons of yours. Hmm. I was terrified all the time I was writing them that something might happen. But I had to go on, whatever the consequences. The more I see of life and death, the more I think it's all nothing but a huge, terrible joke. Why do we live? And why do we suffer? And do we have to die to find out? Once upon a time, I thought I knew. No. If I could tell you the answers in words, Doctor, there'd be no need for me to write music. Well, that's a pity. But if you have found a meaning to it all, I shall never know. I'm... <laughs> I'm tone deaf. Say, ah. 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 Slight infection. I thought you sounded a bit hoarse. Still, there's nothing to worry about there. Uh, nor your heart either. But don't overtax yourself. Avoid violent exercise. No running. No swimming. You take care of yourself. You live for years. What about conducting? I've got a concert tomorrow night. Well, it's up to you. See how you feel. Uh, when did you last have a thorough medical examination? Yesterday. Huh? Paris Clinic. Just before we got on the train. They noticed that throat infection, too. Well, this will take care of that. Uh, doubtless they'll send your own doctor a report which will confirm my findings about your heart. Uh, watch the throat. Gargle night and morning. They take a large dose of Mendelssohn for your malady, Doctor. What? Oh, to cure my tone deafness, you mean? I think I'd rather die than listen to that stuff. You may be right. They do say the devil has all the best tunes. We'll sing them together. <laughs> good news. For me or Max? What did you tell him? I meant the doctor. You're hot. Just rest and you'll be all right. You'll be coming into San Polton soon. You can leave me with a clear conscience. Yes, I can. As long as I thought you loved me. I didn't mind being your housekeeper, your music copyist, or your whore. One day, I thought you'd stop loving your music and start loving me. Did you never realize? My music is my love for you. It is you. I thought it was all about the birds and the bees. 
Do you remember the summer of 1904? It was hot. Is that all? Oh, and you were foul. There was a reason. Yes, that wretched Sixth Symphony. It was bitter, it's true. I was foul. I was filled with despair at the waste. Hugo, Otto, I wanted to end it all. Who was it? Brought me back to life. What is the one bright, positive spark in the whole symphony? Don't you remember the second subject of the first movement? I copied it out. Remember? Didn't you recognize yourself? That's you, my love. As long as my music lasts, our love will last. Sister. It's Dr. Ruth again. I'm phoning from the station. I just heard and I rushed straight down here. It's positive. They confirmed their diagnosis of the smear from the throat infection. It's flared up again, yes. The old carditis, I'm afraid. No chance. A week or two at the most. Is everything ready? Good. We should be at the hospital in about 15 minutes. That is, if I don't miss him. Yes, a great tragedy. Bye. How nice of him to meet us. You can go home, Doctor. We're going to live forever. <laughs> 